So this is one part of the tricorder. This is what we call the continuous vital sign monitor. And it actually goes around your neck like this. You would normally wear it underneath your clothes. And then this earpiece goes inside your ear like this. So what this does is it gathers all the vital signs from your body. So these, imagine these electrodes are resting on my chest underneath my shirt. So that's gathering the ECG trace. And then in my ear, I have sensors that are gathering my body temperature and my blood oxygen level. And then in the computer in the back and in the cloud, it takes that information and puts it together. And because of those signals, we can also measure respiration rate. We can measure the heart rate. We can actually measure, we have a body temperature, blood oxygen, ECG. And then there's even an accelerometer inside the device that can measure my body position. All, the, all that data flows into the cloud and then our artificial intelligence in the cloud analyzes that data and extracts what might be, what might be wrong with it. And the other piece of the tricorder is a software running on a smartphone. And um, you'll see all the different data on the smartphone. And the smartphone asks you questions. And then, just like a real doctor would, and then based on the answers to those questions and all the data gathered from the devices, it'll actually determine whether or not you have a specific condition. We have software that actually listens to the sound of a person coughing. And based on the sound, it diagnoses what respiratory disease the person has. Well, the only way to make that work is to take thousands and thousands of samples of people coughing. The concept of the tricorder comes from Star Trek. So when I first heard about the Qualcomm Tricorder X Prize, which is a competition to develop an actual working tricorder, I realized that the, the, the company had technology that might be able to be applied to this. So of 330 teams around the world, we applied for the tricorder competition back in 2013. And we were accepted into the competition, and we became finalists in the competition in August of 2014. We had a very powerful, um, very, very innovative doctor. So we really just worked with him to come up with a framework for how our doctor would have to work. How, what kind of questions would the software ask? What kind of information would the artificial intelligence need in order to make a decision about, is the person, you know, have, do they have this condition or don't they? The tricorder is designed to be many different devices all in one sort of package. But each one of those different devices could be sold all by itself. So this device, for example, is going to first be used in the hospital. But there are also versions of this that we can build that people can use for monitoring older people. There are versions that we can create for sports. So imagine if you're running a marathon or you're playing some kind of sport. This data on how your body is performing could be very powerful. So there's two things that have to happen that are going to make a big impact on healthcare. The first is that Healthcare is going to become much more something you do at home or something you do at work or you do sort of using technology as opposed to going to the doctor like we do now. In the near future, you will start using telemedicine much more than you do now. The second thing is artificial intelligence will start to help doctors make better decisions. Right now, 40% of the amount of time, in North America at least, 40% of the time that doctors spend at, at work is doing paperwork. It's an enormous waste of their time. If all of that can be handled using artificial intelligence, and if a lot of the routine questions, routine taking of medical histories, all of this really boring, easy work that doctors still have to do, if all of that can be done by artificial intelligence, then the doctor can spend her time only focused on the things she was trained for in medical school, which is figuring out what's wrong with you and helping you. So we believe that that is going to be a revolution in healthcare, and it's going to mean all over the world, whether you're in the, in the developed world, in the, the, the rich world, or in the developing world, you're going to have access to much better healthcare, but it's also going to take less time and cost less money overall.